Hi guys, it's Katie here again from Bella Creativa and I would like to record another video to share with you today um, making another page in the Broderie mini album and the uh, pieces uh, or the files that I'm using are called SVG files and they're scalable vector graphic files that you can use in cutting the machines so like I should say, um, the Cricut a Silhouette or a Brother Scanning Cut. So you can uh, purchase these files from my Etsy store and download them straight to your computer and from there you can upload them to your uh, soft cutting machine software. I use a Cricut so I use the Cricut Design Space and from there I can cut out all the pieces in here to make mini albums. Um, it's a complete package, there's 30 files and uh, you can make a mini album from start to finish using all the pieces in here. So in our previous uh, videos we've made the cover and inserted the pages and we have done the first two pages in our album and today I would like to do just a simple page to go here for our third page. So let's have a look at the pieces that I've cut out and we can put it together. So the first piece that I've cut out is a base page mat. So I should explain that I've made up this little booklet with pictures of each of the pieces that come as a file so that I can easily explain to you which pieces I've used to make a particular page and also so you can see that there might be different ways that you can use each of the pieces. So the actual pieces themselves are in the bluey colour and then the mats for each of the pieces is in the pink colour. So just to make it nice and easy to um, explain it hopefully. So the first piece I've cut out is a base page mat and I've cut that out of um, scrapbook paper or designer paper and today I'm actually using a digital collection from Knitwits Collections and it's called Always and Forever and whenever I download a digital um, um, paper pack I like to print it all out in this wallet in the wallet size so that I can easily um, choose and see exactly what it's going to look like when I print it out so and with the knit wits you get a lot of ephemera pieces as well so I've also um, printed that out in the wallet size so I can see exactly what I'd like so that's what I've used for the scrapbook paper or the mats themselves and then so that's uh, the base page mat Next piece I have cut out is over here and it is this piece here, G2 and that's this piece here and the cutting machine, my Cricut, has or it cuts it out perfectly to size so that it fits perfectly and it also does all the scoring and there's score lines here but I haven't inked those up yet so they might not be quite so easy to see. But for my actual pieces themselves I have used this cream paper from Recollection, 65 pound or 176 GSM. So that's what I'm using for the um, all the pages and elements um, in my album. So I've cut out G2 and I'm going to use that as a flip today rather than a pocket. If I wanted to use it as a pocket I would leave these two side tabs on but I'm going to chop those off. Um, and because it's going to be a flip, I need a mat for both sides. So the mat for both sides is G5. So I've cut out two of those. And these are G5. And I write on the back what pieces they are so that I don't get confused if I um, mix everything up. Or perhaps if I don't use it this time, I might use it another time. And I'll do the same thing for these pieces as well. So I've written G2 on here and that just makes it nice and easy for me to know exactly which mats go with which pieces and what, what each of the pieces actually are. So I've cut out two of the G5 mats that's, that sit on G2. And then I have cut out some pieces from here. This um, file is called bits and pieces because there's just lots of bits and pieces. 
So from here I have cut out one of these, which is J7, and I've, as you can see I've labelled it J7. So it's one of those, and then I have cut out the mat for that as well, which is J14. So I've cut out a little mat for that, and I've already inked up around the edges. And then I have cut out two of J8, and on one of them I have flipped it over so that they um, go in different directions like that. So there's two of those J8s, and as you can see I've already inked around the edges of those pieces as well. And then I have also cut two of the J16s and I've done the same thing. I've flipped one over to make sure that they um, face the right direction. So there's two of those. So that's what I've cut out for today's page. It's going to be quite a simple page because we've got a busy page on the other side that we've already done. And I don't want to make it terribly bulky. So I'm just going to get out my... Um, mat which is just a shelf protector that I bought from the hardware store just so I don't get goop and glue everywhere and I like to use Helmar's fabric glue to stick my uh, mini album together you can use tape or you can use um, any wet glue that you prefer this is what I can get in Australia and um, I find that the fabric glue is great because it doesn't make the paper or the cardstock um, buckle and it dries really quickly so that's what I use it does get a little on the stringy side but you know you can't have everything can you right so here's oh no I won't get out the album just yet what I do want to do however is the first thing to do is to just um, because I want to use this piece G2 as a flip I don't want these two tabs here and as you can see I've already put little crosses on there to remind me to trim those pieces off and um, there's a score line there so I'm just going to get out my cutting board and I'm just going to trim those two little tabs off there's a bit of something left in there uh, this is as much cutting as I have to do, so I'm just going to line it up on right on that score line that my Cricut's put there for me, and then just trim that little tab off, and that's rubbish. I can go straight in with my bin. Yeah, so I don't have to do very much cutting at all. The machine obviously does it for me, and the reason why I just have to do this little bit is because I have included all of those tabs on the pieces so that I can um, make each of the pieces more versatile so that could have been a pocket but today I would like it to be a flip so I just cut those tabs off and now it's a flip. I'm going to round my edges I think because I think um, that always looks nice or you could use a corner punch and then I'm just going to ink out those edges there that I didn't do before. So I try to remember not to, um, this is just my preference, try not to um, fold over on score lines when I aren't, I'm not going to use them as a folded score line but I'm actually going to end up chopping that tab off. Um, the reason that I do that is I think you get a nicer, um, you get a nicer cut line. It's just a bit neater if you don't um, if you don't fold those before you trim them. But you know sometimes you do, and that's okay too. Okay, so today I'm just going to open it up to the page that we're working on, which is this one here. I intend on popping this on here so that it's a, so it flips out this way. So let's just go ahead and do that. So the reason that I really love these um, files is because I really don't have to worry about um, measuring and cutting and measuring and scoring because it's already all been done by these files and my cutting machine. So I just cut out the pieces that I want to use and um, the mats that I want to put on them and 
stick it all together in any way that I would like to. And I'm always thinking of uh, other ways of using the pieces. So whilst they might look like something quite plain, you can actually use them for a lot of different um, versatile things, which is why I call them versatile files. Okay, so we've got that little fellow stuck on there. And then on the inside, I wanted to use this little piece here, this J7 piece. And I just wanted to pop him down the bottom, sort of in the middle there, as a little, um, little tuck spot for some tags or photo frame, um, photo mats or anything like that. Now, if I stick it with this tab, it will fold down, which I don't necessarily want it to do. So I'm actually going to run a little, I oh, hope you can see all this, talking away to myself and holding it really close to myself. If I, I'll say it again. If, um, if I just stick that tab down on here, then this piece itself will fold. And I don't really want that. I want it to stay upright like this. So I'm actually going to run a little bead of glue along there and stick the tab down onto the piece as well. But first of all, I'll stick this piece down on here. So I think I can probably manage to get that fairly uh, centered. That looks pretty centered. I might just put a little mark here like this. And then I'm just going to pop some glue on this tab. And I'm just going to line that back up again. About like that, I believe. I'll stick it down. Just make sure that it's stuck down pretty well. And then I might put my mat down on top of there right from the start, should I? I'm just wondering about if I need a little closure for this. Mm, I'm gonna risk it without. We can always add something later if we're not happy with it. So let's stick the tab and um, the mat down. So this is the piece number is C2 and it's the base page mat. And uh, so I just cut one of these out on my Cricut. And it's all ready to size. So I just inked around the edges and popped it down. Like that. Now, this album itself, um, I have made it so that if you downloaded it straight off Etsy and started cutting it out, you would make an album this size. And so the album itself is um, seven by seven, seven inches across by seven inches uh, wide. And yeah, um, the pages are a little bit bigger than six inches each, but the mats, these mats here can be cut from a six inch piece of paper. So this is um, a great opportunity to use your six by six um, paper pads. However, because the um, nature of um, SVG files is that they're scalable, you can scale them all up and make a much bigger album using exactly the same pieces. So that's another reason why this is really versatile and you can make lots of different albums out of it. Okay, so I think I'm just going to run a little bead of glue just along the edge here because I don't want this little fella to keep um, flipping down like this. And I'm just going to fold it over and push it down. And then now it's just a little, um, now it's just a little tuck spot. A cute little tuck spot and we can pop the mat on there already so this is the mat and it is J14 so I just cut that out and inked around the edges of course you don't have to ink around the edges but I want it to have that sort of vintagey feel to it and I'm just going to pop that piece down and center it 
as best I can where I think I'm happy with it. I'll pop that down like that. And that's that one done. Now on this little flip, I'm just going to move some bits out of the way here. Excuse me. On this little flip on this side, I'm just going to mat it. I'm not going to do anything fancy there. I'm going to use this piece here, which is G5. That's going to go on there. Now because I've rounded the edges on my uh, flip, I'm going to do the same with my um, mat. So I'll just trim those and ink up those corners and then just apply some glue. So I call this mini album um, Brodery because it has a lot of pieces that have this the fancy sort of lace borders and edges like this here. But you can make an entire album using the pieces that don't have those um, fancy edges and it doesn't need to be this quite pretty feminine kind of an album and so I thought I might also do a series on using these SVG files to make um, a, probably a sort of a, a plainer or at least maybe a more masculine version using exactly the same pieces but not not the ones with the lace on so there are equally as many pieces that you can use that don't have the lace edges like this one here and then this is the mat for this one and I'm going to put corners on those two edges to just round those edges to um, go with my little flip and glue that one down and this is also uh, G5 the piece is the G5 piece, which is the mat. And I'll just pop this on here. Line it up. This is a really simple little page, and, it, and it, just making albums is so simple when I just choose which pieces I want to use. And I'm doing lots of fancy pages, but you don't need to. You could, you don't have to do fan, lots of fancy, you, you could do an album of all the same pages and I, I think it would still look stunning. So these are my mats for these pieces, so I'm just going to pop those on here. So I have J16, which goes straight on top of J8. So I'm going to do that for both of these pieces. So also included in SVG files is a lot of different uh, inserts and tags, but I am going to leave that um, putting in the inserts and tags until the end. For now I'm just trying to put my pages together because I get a little bit overwhelmed sometimes and so I feel like I need to just do it in stages. So I'll do the album, make the album cover and insert the pages and then just work my way through each of the pages and then I'll come back and put in my inserts and tags and then I'll embellish it or those two I might sometimes do at the same time, the embellishing and the inserts, but I, I can't think of everything all at the same time. So, right, so there's our two little pieces. And all I'm gonna do is make these two little pockets um, in line here and um, just have them crossing over a little bit like that. Now this one here needs to be, I should have done that, but I didn't. Let's just pull this up for a second. I just need to do a little little corner rounding here. If I can, should have, I was too busy talking and not paying attention. So I'll just pop a little bit more glue on there. Lucky we caught that before it dried on for good. And just squash that down. And then I'll fold that over and cut around that little edge as well. Mm. Oh. And just put a bit of ink on there. Okay, and then this little chap's ready to go down. 
so I'll just put some glue on these tabs. This is so simple, this little page is so simple. And quick. And so I'm going to pop this one down on here. Like so. do the same with this one now this has got a, a square edge so I don't need to round that and I don't think that you would be able to tell now do I want it to go over like that or do I want to slide it in behind like that I think I want to slide it in behind I don't know why but I do so let's do that so just put some glue on those tabs and then slide this in here line it up on the edge and squash it down press it down flat squash it press it you know what I mean and that is that page done simple and quick and I think pretty cute so now we have little inserts we can put our little inserts and tags in here and when we open it up open it up we can put a picture in here and I might do a bit of embellishing on here but but something nice and flat and then we have this little pop piece here where we can um, slide some things in there so when we get around to putting in some photo um, mats and that sort of thing so I think it will sit there really nicely and that's also a really lovely spot to do a little bit of embellishing so that is our third page so I hope you have enjoyed watching this quick little video today and I hope that um, you find it interesting and useful if you would like to um, purchase my SVG files I'll put the link to my Etsy store in the description box I'll also put a link in the description box to the Knitwits collection digital collection that I'm using to um, match this um, album and I hope that you join me for some of the other videos in this series where we make the rest of the pages and fill it up with inserts and tags and uh so yeah i hope to see you guys again thanks very much for watching and bye for now bye